Before we talk about that, let's begin the show with the latest from our module on the moon. The Pragyan rover, the ramp has already been opened. I'll quickly go across to this video wall over here and show you the latest visuals that we're tracking. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the latest visual that the ISRO has put out. What you're looking at is the rover, Pragyan rover that is now moonwalking and there you go. India is now walking on the moon. It's the latest visual. It is off the 23rd of August, of course, uh, after the landing was done and the ramp opened up and the Pragyan rover, uh, well, you know, in all its glory, like you can see, is moving up ahead. We are going to do a detailed discussion on a Pragyan rover later in the day as well, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, do tune in to that as well. A couple of panelists with us on the show today have also erstwhile spoken about uh, the scientific experiment that the Pragyan rover will carry out. And it's important because over the next 12 days, it is this rover, ladies and gentlemen, that you're seeing on your screens that will carry out the major part, the major chunk of uh, lunar soil experimentation. And as you can see, even as it begins its descent down towards the lunar surface, you can actually see the name tag, the name plate with ISRO, uh, the tricolor uh, there. As soon as the sun rays hit that tricolor right at the back portion of the Pragyan rover, you can see the tricolor, you can see the ISRO's logo and the imprint. It is leaving on the lunar soil. Well, uh, now that I've shown you this particular visual, I just was really excited. So just wanted to share that with the viewers. But uh, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, let's turn our gaze from the moon now to the sun as we embark on this exciting journey into the heart of India's space endeavors and our solar system. It's time to unveil the Aditya L1 mission, where ISRO's vision takes us beyond our terrestrial boundaries to unlock the mysteries of our nearest star, the sun. Now, this ambitious mission, set to launch soon in September 2023, marks India's first space-based observatory class solar mission. Join us in the comment sections down below, ladies and gentlemen, as we deep dive into the intricacies of this remarkable venture. From the spacecraft's launch by our very own polar satellite launch vehicle, the PSLV, to its strategic positioning at the elusive Lagrange Point 1, which is why the mission is also called Aditya L1. L1 essentially meaning to lag range point 1, which is a staggering 15 lakh kilometers away from the Earth. Now, this prime vantage point, which is known as L1, which is why the mission is also called Aditya L1, grants us an uninterrupted view of the Sun. And what that means is that it allows us real time observations of the solar activities and their impact on the space weather. Now, as we navigate through the fascinating aspects of Aditya L1 mission, we'll also explore the significance of L1 point, dissect the reasons driving the study of the sun from space and unveil the incredible potential this mission holds for understanding our solar system's powerhouse. So, well, fasten your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen, and get ready to soar into the solar realm of space exploration, bringing you stories, insights, and perspectives that make Aditya L1 a milestone in India's cosmic journey. Meanwhile, joining us on the panel are uh, experts and aerospace scientists. Dev Datta Mishra, former senior scientist with the Indian Space Research Organization. A very warm welcome to you. Uh, Prajwal Shastri, emeritus scientist, astronomy and astrophysics. Very warm welcome to you, ma'am. And of course, group captain V N Jha, senior aerospace scientist and joint director DRDO. Uh, group captain Jha, always a pleasure to be speaking to you as well. And I'm going to, uh, you know, start uh, rolling this ball with group captain Jha, who's been with us tirelessly. Um, like I said, group captain, you're, you've been putting in uh, the warrior portion of the shift, uh, not us uh, media personnel back in the studio. Of course, it is a cosmic race for space exploration and India, it seems, is going everywhere, uh, be it the uh, Samudrayan, be it the Gaganyan, be it, uh, you know, Shukrayan that's already on the cards when we're um, going to go to Venus. But today, let's focus on Aditya L1. Group Captain Jha, first and foremost, how important is it to study the sun from space? Why is there a specific need to study the sun from space. Thank you very much once again, uh, uh, Kabir, for having taken up the cause of science and uh, especially taken up the cause of, uh, uh, you know, the planetary observations and the studies. Uh, it's a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, important area for us to study. Uh, before the science, uh, the modern science developed in India, uh, we apparently knew a lot about the solar system and even the planetary system. Though scientifically, from the modern scientific point of views, 
those facts were uh, not proven uh, but we knew about the signs that they they you know certain things are happening and uh, uh, that is how everything was there and now in the present days of the science uh, especially the with the with the advent of the space mm. uh, technologies it is possible for our uh, sensor systems to be deployed somewhere as you are mentioning about the aditya uh, the mission is aditya and as you rightly mentioned it is the lagrange point uh, l1 that we are sending the aditya mission uh hmm. just for hmm. your viewers to understand lagrange point is nothing but a point between the two uh, masses having their own gravity sun has got massive gravity right earth has got much less of that gravity and between the two there will be a point where each gravity will be countering each other uh, to leave one small area whether there is neither a pull nor a push hmm hmm well it it seems like uh, we've lost our connection uh, with the uh, group captain jha over there uh, could be a solar flare that's why we're going to put our aditya l1 uh, probe up there uh, to study uh, you know its impact on the space weather group captain jha I, it seems like you're back with us do sir do, do, do continue do continue so this lagrange point uh, is the one where the two gravities one of the of sun and another of the planet we are talking of the earth's gravity these two come together and where there is a, a you know limit of each other leaving a hmm. small area hmm. where is virtually no gravity that is the lagrange point that we are talking of uh, there are uh, many lagrange points uh, you know the sun has got a uh, 360 degree axis all over the uh, gravity is you know hmm. Uh, hmm. Uh, in phenomenal uh, so much and so that even the uranus uh, uh, neptune they are within the gravity range of the sun and which is rotating all around this within the perigee or the apogee what were you can call it so that much is the gravity now in case of earth these are the points where our satellites can sit down uh, for several mm -hmm. year without any boosting up without any movement and they remain there uh, because as i mentioned to you that uh, these are the fixed point where by and large mass are stable under zero g gravity and if you orient it to look towards a particular side say looking towards the sun l1 is the one which is in the line to the sun l2 is on the reverse direction in the in the dark side of the earth and if we divide uh, the entire 360 degree around the sun into 120 degree each so every 120 degree cuts l l1 we have already talked of l2 we have already talked of l3 hmm. uh, 5 and 4 3 4 and 5 these are the points where all these are there so these are the various points where the gravity uh resultant gravity is zero okay in and around the sun and, and th th these lag range points are essentially a uh, group point. captain just Any to ju just to you know break that uh, uh, you know uh, statement a little bit uh, to again help the viewers understand that lag range point essentially means uh, it is a vantage point it is 15 lakh kilometers away from the earth and the vantage point why a vantage point because there is unobstructed view of the sun throughout a continuous unobstructed view without any eclipsing right right group captain absolutely there is no and 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 and, 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 and at the same time what are the challenges of placing your spacecraft at this l1 point <laughs> uh there there are many challenges it's you know rocket science as you know whether you go on to the moon or you go on to the mars or you go into the space like this lagrange point so hmm. these have got their own challenges uh at these points our satellites are static as as far as the earth's orientation is concerned for a given point hmm. or sun's hmm. orientation is concerned for a given point or if it is l2 that is in the dark part of the earth uh, you know in within the shadow of the earth if it is l2 from there 
there is no sunlight coming up there as such uh, uh, mostly and it keeps on looking towards the darker side of the entire universe mm. like you know recently mm. one european uh, satellite has been placed into l2 in which without the interference of the sunlight photons it keeps on looking in that darker side of the entire universe to find out various things uh, so so those are the advantage of either looking into the dark or continuously looking at the sun if you continuously keep on looking at the sun you come to know a lot of things about the sun you know every time that that you see the corona that you see the deformation on the corona that right. you see, see the uh, atmosphere the, look at see the light its intensity its its various components that is happening in and around the sun so you keep at looking constantly without any interruption so that's the advantage that's the advantage uh, point for any observation satellite to be looking at a particular star be it sun or be it anywhere uh, anything else so that's the advantage that is where aditya is going till now as i mentioned to you we know something about the sun and the solar hmm, system hmm, and the hmm. you know entire universe from our books which are very old very old uh, uh, books uh, that is giving to uh, us the insight into it just to see beyond those understandings these are the scientific objectives that hmm, the aditya hmm. will be going all right to explore till now know everything from what us has told us russia has told us now now we will we will know what we will find out of our own scientific experimentation and that's actually uh, you know a, a great point that group captain you've pointed out that we won't be lending on information from the west we will have it on our own now aditya l1 ladies and gentlemen there are some scientific objectives that it has to complete let's just uh, tell you that it is going to understand the coronal heating which group captain was already talking about and also solar wind acceleration it's also going to understand the coronal mass ejection and the flares in space weather near the earth now it is also going to understand coupling and dynamics of the solar atmosphere and will also understand solar wind distribution and temperature and isotropy but that's not all there's a uniqueness to this aditya l1 mission it's the first ever spatially resolved solar disk near the uv band information on cme dynamics close to the solar disk Uh, that is going to be studied there is on board intelligence to detect cmes coronal uh, mass flares uh, you know explosions and solar flares as well and there is also directional and energy and isotropy of solar winds which makes this aditya l1 a very unique uh, mission indeed uh, also with us uh, on the broadcast is uh, of course uh, uh, you know um, we've got other isro scientists with us um, on this broadcast um, joining us is also devdatta mishra who's a former senior scientist devdatta Uh, uh what's your opinion on the payloads uh and the packages that have been uh, fitted on this aditya l1 machine would you like to throw some light i think there are seven different uh, you know packages that have been installed uh, what is going to be used for what very quickly would you just tell the viewers that yeah thank you very much uh, good afternoon good afternoon to all hmm. of you uh this aditya l1 mission was conceived uh, maybe 12 to 13 years back here around 2010 if i don't to remember and since then many things have evolved uh the seven uh, instruments which is uh, going to be uh, operational with l1 adit l1 mission i think i don't have to tell much about uh, why it is l1 i think uh, hmm hmm group captain uh, has already mr jha has already explained about it there are uh, different uh, longer jump points l1 l2 and the beauty of this uh, orbits are that like uh, once you put some object in that uh, orbit l1 l2 like that l1 currently we are uh, targeting l1 it will work like a uh, sat planet of uh, sun like how our earth is moving around sun in a balanced way so that object also will uh, evolve around sun so is a two centric two body centric uh, uh, mechanics orbital mechanics so i am not going very deep into that okay and aditya l1 uh, is not the first uh, uh, scientific mission which isro is going to do before that also we had a very successful uh, satellite mission called uh, astrosat uh, mm. still it is alive and giving lot of information about the galaxy about the whole universe within its reach to our indian space community and as well as uh, with all astrophysics community across the globe aditya l1 all these seven instruments uh one is visible emission line coronagraph uh, one thing i think you all will agree with me the sun is the 
uh, is the main focal um, celestial body object in our solar system which controls uh, all the planets if we are alive today on planet earth because of sun because it gives that required warmth that heat that lightning uh, lighting to us uh, and based on that we all are surviving here so we cannot ignore the very much uh, uh, existence of our livelihood in earth due to sun that is the main reason why sun is uh, our main point of attraction main point of our uh, uh, mm-hmm. to understand what mm-hmm. is exactly happening there and how it affects our day to day life on earth uh, um, what it creates uh, uh, what you call like uh, hindrance to our systems be it electronics be it electromagnetic uh, instruments in space you know uh, when there is a solar wind we have to switch off all our uh, satellite payload communication devices so that it should not get damaged by that and uh, on earth we are having now all the grid everything is connected through uh, computing system so we have to shut down many of the grids it has happened many in the past hmm. and um, the kind of projection uh, uh, this uh, astronomical uh, experts astrophysics experts are giving that in the coming days uh, much and more disturbances are going to happen on sun so what is triggering those kind of uh, disturbances so there are total seven instruments are there uh, i'll list these down one is a visible emission light uh, coronagraph which will give the overall corona um, uh, the development around the sun because if something is uh, uh, glazing so that creates mm. a corona around it that is nothing but a uh, combination of uh, electrons it's like a cloud of electrons Okay. Uh, that corona happens you you uh, might have observed is that after uh, any rainy days if you can see the same corona around our electric cables we might not have observed but you can see a very violet color um, one ring getting formed around the electric cable or power transmission cable such kind that is also is called corona same thing happens uh, is happening around sun we want to understand what is the composition of it second okay. is solar ultraviolet imaging telescope it keeps what kind of uh, Uh, photosphere and chromosphere imaging uh, and it happens in a very narrow broadband so uv you know ultraviolet uh, ray is a very dangerous ray if it comes directly fall on uh, our skin it can create lot of diseases our ozone layer is protecting us but you know like nowadays ozone layer also is having uh, uh, lot of problems lot of uh, weak points are there because of our um, uh, human uh intervention because we are using such kind of gases right, like right. Uh, ammon- ammonia and all these thing and the uh, rocket gas aeroplane emissions everything so so is uh, having started showing its uh, results so like now there is lot of uv uh, induction problems are happening so this aditya l1 also will study the effect of that in a very broader way okay. high solar low energy x-ray spectrometer so that will give the uh, spectroscopy of the sun uh, because we know all sun is a star Absolutely. So basically, it is a star. It's not a planet like us, uh, like Earth or. It's the closest uh, star. We will finally be uh, studying a star on our own and not relying on uh, yes. you know Western um, uh, you know inferences. I know that you're only on the third payload, but I'm going to have to stop you here, Devdutt, uh, because you know we also have a third panelist with us on the show, and let's uh, bring them in to the discussion as well. Prajwal Shastri, emeritus scientist, astronomy and astrophysics. Uh, thank you for waiting so patiently, ma'am. Uh, now that we know what the payloads essentially are. now that we know why we need to study the sun i i really want you to t- touch upon the aspect of how aditya l1 essentially uh, you know given the dynamic and the complex nature of sun its ability holding the solar system together with its gravitational force i mean uh, that's that's a real strong gravitational force now the complex um, complexity is the dynamic of the sun's activities how will real time observations be carried out by aditya l1 and how will that be sent back to the earth uh, would you like to throw some light on that ma'am Uh, so uh, the last point, how will it be sent back to Earth? That is uh, a very well-established uh, technology communication between. Uh, can you hear me? Absolutely, absolutely. You're with us. Okay, so communication between uh, satellites, telescopes, which are out there, and the Earth is uh, a very well-established technology. Uh, nothing special about that. The L1 point enables constant communication uh, between the Earth. and the uh, aditya satellite mm-hmm. so uh, that is one advantage of the that is the second advantage of the l1 position uh, another thing to note about l1 is it's a position of 
uh, equilibrium, but it is not a stable position. So it is a position where uh, the gravity pull of the sun and the earth sort of cancel out. However, it is sort of like being on a very uh, uh, flat, flattish kind of hill. Uh, so right. a slight nudge can uh, take the satellite off. So it constantly needs corrections and it's in a small orbit over there. Mm. It's not mm. uh, exactly stationary in the frame of that sun. And so it is, so you have the sun, the earth and this uh, these things which are there in L1, which are moving around the sun along uh, with the earth. And there are several uh, telescopes there. There have been several telescopes there in the past. It's a very it's a very popular uh, destination, so to speak, uh, for hmm. Hmm. Um, astrophysical telescopes. Um, so the communication part is sort of fairly straightforward. Uh, why we need it there, uh, why we need to study the sun, um, to add to what has been said, uh, the sun is just one of a billions of billions of stars. We have a few hundred billion stars in our Milky Way, and similarly, there are many billion galaxies like our Milky Way, all of them containing stars. But the nearest other star to us is four and a half light years away. So there's no way we can get very, very sharp images of even that nearest star, which is Proxima Centauri. The sun is our best case. So the sun is a star which we can study in great detail. Uh, also, mm. it has mm. it has direct impact on us uh, both in our daily lives and because now we depend so much on uh, electromagnetic waves outside of visible light, as was already mentioned through our technology, communication, and so on. And right. the sun is a huge magnet. Basically, it's a very very big magnet. And uh, it's uh, the plasma, it, it, it constantly ejects these very high power uh, ejections of plasma, uh, mm, which mm. come all the way uh, to the earth. And so we need to uh, be aware of that in order to sort of preempt any catastrophes with respect to our uh, de dependence on communication technologies in the modern world. Uh, this is referred to as space weather. So. Uh, one of the satellites, one of the other mm. missions, which is in L1, uh, which is a collaboration between NASA and ESA, uh, does do a lot of space weather studies in addition to doing uh, cutting edge uh, scientific studies. So uh, in terms of the scientific studies, uh, the main uh, telescope, which actually originally drove this mission, even before it was visualized as an L1 mission. Uh, I have to say, I'm a scientist who is not involved in the mission, so all my comments are as an outsider. So right. this is called a coronagraph, and essentially a coronagraph means that you blot out the light from the sun so that you can see what is around it. So mm. it is like, mm. you know, putting mm. our thumb, uh, if the sun is... Uh, overwhelming us, we put a thumb to block out the sun so that we can see what's around. And uh, the reason is that the sun has this uh, stuff that we call the corona, which is a very, very high temperature plasma, very tenuous. It's visible during total solar eclipses. Right. Uh, it's very, very beautifully visible. I mean, if people would see it in India, there's a tendency for people not to see it. But if people would see it, it's a very, very beautiful phenomenon. But there's a lot of physics that we don't understand. It's at very, very high temperatures. And we don't understand why that high temperature, uh, how that high temperatures. Uh, you know what, you know what, Pranjur, why, so, why I asked you uh, that particular question was because, uh, you know, I mean, there is increasing interest in space. I'm, I'm just uh, trying sorry, to I didn't hear the last bit. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, what I'm saying is that, you know, there is growing interest in space. What sets Aditya L1 mission apart from all the other missions that have reached L1, that particular lag range point? So th there are a lot of missions in L1 which are not studying the sun. So uh, there is, uh, there is so which is the NASA is a collaboration which is studying the sun, which is at L1. Uh, Aditya has this coronagraph. So the coronagraph will do uh, what are called spectral studies of the corona, like I said, to understand the physics and understand how the high temperatures in the corona created. Uh, Aditya will also have a camera which will take images of the sun in All the right. ultraviolet, meaning full images of the sun without blocking. Uh, that is similar to SOHO, 
but the exact frequencies at which uh, at the exact ultraviolet frequencies at which the images will be taken is somewhat different from what soho has so the ultraviolet range we define as uh, roughly from about 100 nanometer hmm, which is hmm. uh, up to about 400 nanometer which is just below what the atmosphere allows in the atmosphere does allow in some ultraviolet light soho studies the extreme which is simply blocked by the atmosphere aditya will study some uh, study the ultraviolet images at some intermediate uh, range and the interior of the sun is not uniform it has layers which are at different temperatures and as i said the sun is one big magnet so explaining what we see uh, the sun do how its light changes and uh, how these super energetic outflows of plasma which find their way to earth are created and so on requires uh, you know multi pronged it seems like it, it seems like aditya l1 has its has its task cut out for it um, there's a lot uh, that the Aditya so L1 has to achieve, doesn't it? There's one I want to make uh, Absolutely. in response to what you said earlier. Hmm. Uh, so uh, I want to emphasize that science knows no boundaries. So science is an enterprise, it's a global enterprise, it's a public good. So as scientists, we don't know boundaries. So the kind of data and insights that will be got from, hmm. for example, SOHO are used by scientists all over the world, including scientists here. Similarly, the, sci the science uh, data got by Aditya will be a global public good and will be used by scientists all over the world. So uh, that is absolutely, that, absolutely, uh, ma'am. I, I, I do concede uh, science is a uh, is a universal endeavor. It, it helps everybody. This is not, uh, you know, India's victory alone. Uh, Aditya L1 is certainly going to be helping the entire universe. Uh, you know what, Devdath, um, we're going to come back to the remaining payloads in just a second. Let me just quickly get in uh, group captain Jha here. Group Captain Jha, L1, uh, you know what Prajwal has already told us, is a very unique position because a little bit of a tipping off can, you know, push push you outside that orbit, you know. I, I think that's the peculiarity of uh, that uh, lag range point one. Uh, now, when we were talking about the lunar orbit insertion, there was a very narrow error for margin, uh, narrow margin for error, beg your pardon. Um, and people did not talk about that as much. Um, we just got an update from ISRO saying that we are now in the lunar orbit and that, that was the end of it. Later on, did I realize that had we missed that insertion, it would have been, uh, you know, a completely different scenario. Is that going to be the same case with this point L1 lag range point? Uh, Kavir, uh, you know, first of all, I was absolutely lost in my thoughts when I saw Mrs. Prajwal talking about it. You know, when one child sees another child, it feels so happy. Hmm. And when one gray hair person looks at the other gray hair person and talking absolute sense, absolute sense I'm talking about, she talked everything what is uh, applicable as on today. So, so I, I was lost in my thought that yes, yes, uh, there are people who know a lot about the, uh, you, you know, the science, what we are talking today about it. I had written up uh, an article about a year back. Hmm. That was gravitational equilibrium, solar system and beyond. And what point today you have raised now? Uh, this large point, is it uh, labile? Is it uh, variable? Is it fixed? It is... Uh, she has already mentioned it is not stable, so that we know. And I was wondering in my paper, in my article earlier, where does this solar system uh, belong to? You know, we are on Earth, a small tiny spot in the entire solar system. Where is the solar system? It is within a stellar system. Where is mm. the stellar system? That is within the Milky Way. Where is the Milky Way? Is that within a cosmos? And where is the cosmos? You know, it's unending. And when you think of one gravity, right now we are talking of uh, gravity of Earth and a small neutral point with, between the gravity of Earth and the gravity of Sun, that is the Lagrange point that we are talking of, you know, uh, what were one, two, three, five, whatever it may be there. Where do we belong to? And we also understand that the solar system it is not fixed, it is not static. It is all moving around. There is a relative velocity. We also know that entire cosmos hmm. is expanding. Hmm. So what happens to the uh, the virtual 
resultant of the gravity being exercised by one planet with the other planet with the sun with the remaining of the planet you know we have uh, about, about i think some uh, nine, 10 years back there was a, a report in the media that all the uh, all the planets are getting aligned and it is written somewhere in one of those uh, vedas that if all the planets are aligned uh, aligned uh, absolutely in the line that could be the beginning of the end of the solar system and today we understand you know when we are talking of the gravitational uh, neutrality between the at that lagrangian point lagrangian point between earth and the uh, and the sun, what hmm. happens between the gravity pull between the uh, sun and the mars earth and the mars mars and the jupiter jupiter saturn sun you know keep on adding up what actually happens the uh, gravitational equilibrium when all these are moving around the sun you know it's a very complex system and i try to uh, reach out to the uh, uh, institute of uh, science the physics department i had one of our director who was uh, phd holder of the physics department he said please don't look too beyond we are too small a person and i the technology even our camera what is going in the uh, you know in the uh, aditya i'm not sure how much it will be able to grasp things mm. what is mm. happening in the solar i'm not sure because you know there is a visible, visible spectrum there is a infrared there is a, a, a ultraviolet range okay. and beyond this is there something more that we don't know of you know we know so little about it i hmm. i i hmm. uh, uh, i just hope that one of the day we talk to one of the uh, uh, cosmologists who have got the scientific data there is very little scientific data very fiable scientific data on the entire uh, cosmos but what what little bit he or she may know to enlighten uh, us that what is there that we out to see you know unless in aviation we know one thing but unless your mind knows you your eyes may not see it you know i'm talking of mostly uh, air traffic controller trying to see one aircraft spot or one aircraft or a pilot flying his own aircraft and trying to spot another aircraft unless your mind knows that i should look at that particular point you will not be able to see so hmm. what all hmm. are those things capacities and capabilities must know and and beyond and beyond and there are so many things beyond it you know it's our knowledge is very very limited in that area okay so okay. what all are the phenomena that we should be expecting to happen so that then we should devise a system through which we can capture those so hmm. long hmm. way to go but i really uh, recommend is road to have given a thought on the aditya mission with what were let six seven let's expand uh, you, you know what you know what group captain i'm i'm, I'm going to expand this question and take this to devdath because he began his opinion and statement by saying that you know this is a project that has been in the pipelines for the last uh, a decade and a half so i'm just going to uh, go to him devdath uh, you know uh, this project uh, was it shelved do you think this has come a little later uh, what group captain jha is talking about that you know uh, we we have to understand the capacity of aditya l1 as well uh, with the chandrayaan 3 also i remember the telecast the live telecast from the bengaluru headquarters began with the commentator saying that this is nothing but our bid to show the world that india can do it whatever is happening Uh, the experiments that is all a bonus but the first and primary idea is to show the world that india can do something like this uh, now group captain talking about uh, that you know the capacity and capabilities of aditya l1 uh, you told us that this is 13 years in the making so are we late or is taking the first step the more important factor here no actually uh, we are not late so every project has its having own timeline if you see uh, aditya l1 mission is not the first mission uh, which uh, which is going to be done by isro uh, with re uh, relevant to astrophysics area uh, before that we already had a project called astrosat which was launched in uh, uh, september uh, 2015 still it is doing a lot of good work and it's providing lot of inputs uh, mm. to our astrophysics mm. specialist in india as well as this uh, uh, echoing or resonating the message of madam 
this information also is equally getting shared with all uh, uh, the equal entry service people across the globe. Uh, we are not, um, uh, Ms. Isro is sharing the knowledge very generously with all the scientific community. And uh, coming to this Aditya L1 mission, uh, is not a, the L1 point is not the highly established point. Rather, we have onboard propulsion here. This is a monopropulsion system, hmm. which is going to help in stabilizing the satellite at that particular uh, area, L1. Uh, this is made in a uh, inside 1000 class uh, bus. So it's a very heavy satellite, actually, Aditya L1. Hmm. Hmm. And um, all these payloads are not getting developed only through only at ISRO, but it is a joint collaboration among all the research bodies in ISRO, like Indian Institute of Astrophysics is there, Raman Institute is there, Physical Research Laboratory Ahmedabad is there, Space Application Center is there, Indian Institute of Science is there. So more is it like a collaboration between industry and academy. Okay. So because the nature of uh, the project is like that. Uh, here, all the academia, they have come forward and joined hand with us. And um, uh, because uh, to have a certain mission, there is always called a window of opportunity. So Chandrayaan 3 was launched in July 14 because that was the uh, good window if you launch and mm. the kind of uh, path the Chandrayaan 3 took to reach moon. If you can see the recently concluded, unfortunately, uh, it got uh, uh, ended with uh, any uh, prematurely ended that is Luna 25 mission, he took its uh, different way to reach moon. So ISRO is always uh, like uh, uh, uses very economical way. So Aditya L1 mission, which is slated to happen in uh, September first week or so, right, based right. on the window, which was calculated long back. It is not How that, long will it take? Uh, How long will it take for Aditya L1 to reach L1, the lag range point one? Yeah, it's a few lakhs kilometer it has to travel by using hmm. its onboard propulsion and uh, it should be around 100 plus days. Uh, it will take okay. to reach that okay. orbit and uh, again it will take another few more. And also uh, very quickly Devdat, I, I know I, I cut you short over there. Um, what do you Sorry. think out of these seven packages, the, the you know the packages on the payload, um, what is the most important uh, instrument out of the seven? So I will give out of ten to the Aditya solar uh, wind particle experiment because as hmm. a space uh, scientist and engineer my more focus is there. My uh, assets in the space uh, should be in the safer condition during all this turbulence what uh, what happens at sun it happens in a regular uh, manner the solar wind solar uh, particle experiment that payload i will give uh, that as more hmm. importance hmm. but maybe uh, other uh, scientists uh, they are they may have their own opinion but i know i am uh, not trying to compare i know each one is equally important uh, and each yes. one's uh, you know inferences are going to be needed uh, but i just wanted your opinion what according to you so you're saying uh, you know the solar the so wind the solar wind reader that's going to be the most important one all right uh Prajwal shastri with us uh, yeah. on the broadcast uh you know even as we're wrapping up this discussion ma'am uh you've given out some real pertinent points i mean i personally was just reading up about the l1 and nowhere did i find this information that it's a point where you know you could a little bit of a nudge here and there and you're off the orbit uh, you're going to be away from the actual the regular orbit line that is something that i completely missed out on so you probably have the right kind of information on this as well i'm just trying to understand that looking ahead with chandrayaan 3 people started saying that sky is not the limit uh, maybe with aditya l1 the neither is the galaxy we're going to break the barrier of the galaxy you yourself just said that science knows no boundaries science has no boundaries now how does our space research ambitions and Aditya L1, the instruments on it, you've heard Devdat and Group Captain Jai as well. How will that further ISRO's cause, uh, the Indian space research's cause? How is that going to be furthered? Um, are we going to break that galaxy barrier as well? Galaxy also not the limit for India? Yeah, so when I said that scientists know no boundaries, hmm. I did not mean physical boundaries. I <laughs> meant social, socially constructed boundaries, such as national boundaries, race, right. boundaries of national race, religion, uh, skin color, this kind of these kind of boundaries, which operate very strongly in our daily lives. But in science, uh, we don't. Uh, we don't know them and we would like to think I agree that with you I, I've been putting uh, uh, group captain Jha and uh, former ISRO chairman Dr. Madhavan Nair on the pedestal so, every now and then because they are not excited at all I keep on asking them why do scientists not show any you know some kind of excitement with Aditya L1 and rightly so they must be more anxious <laughs> than excited uh, but at the same time do go on sorry to cut you short no I am excited about Aditya because it is going to bring a new scientific results for all hmm. of us 
that's the important point now about galaxy and so on uh, i mean that is uh, really stretching it because as i said if even the next nearest star is 400 four and a half light years away which means that it will take decades uh, even if we think of a probe uh, to go there it will take decades eventually there may be such probes uh, but that's not the point here in aditya what uh, isro is demonstrating is the capability of launching a, a spacecraft into this uh, position of l1 uh, which is which requires certain uh, amount of expertise on the technological side and it's not new expertise mm. uh, it's been done many times before uh, but now isro has it. so uh, i would i am of the opinion as a scientist uh, that this will of course bring us new results and i'm excited about it so that way i don't resonate with your question as to which is the most important instrument because all of them are going to be complementary to each other and mm. Mm. we do need to study to to understand fully the physics of any object in the cosmos uh, we do need to study it using multiple uh, methods multiple frequencies ultraviolet visible light x rays mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. what some of these uh, instruments are going to do there's going to be an x ray spectrometer as well and also the charged particles uh, that are in that atmosphere and which are going to have which are going to be measurable by some of these instruments so they all complement each other to increase our understanding of what is happening Absolutely. in the sun and uh, yeah so uh, the galaxy uh, is very very far away i mean uh, we do uh, we do study our galaxies using telescopes on earth and using telescopes in orbit around earth and we have uh, deepened our understanding enormously we don't need to send probes out there uh, in order to study everything so uh, and the mm, probes mm. i mean the possibility of sending probes is uh, very far away i think the way forward and the way the future is international collaborations as one community as okay, one okay. global community to push the frontiers of knowledge to combine our technological expertise rather than see each other in competition that is the most effective way forward that is what will bring us scientific knowledge in the most efficient manner absolutely ma'am and of course when i uh, you know um, put forth that question to devdat i think i should have used the word intrigue rather than important i understand i didn't want to compare all the seven payloads amongst themselves um, of course all of them are going to be important just want to understand what devdat uh, thought was the most important one according to him um, so galaxy a little fast stretching but it seems like the sun the closest star to us will give us some sort of an idea uh, give us a give us a template what it is going to be like to study the sun and uh, more importantly like group captain jha said uh, it is something Uh, that we won't have to rely on uh, western information for it will be our own information but then again at the same time something that prajwal shastri said that this this scientific acumen is for the human uh, you know for the entire human kind not one countries or one races or one particular uh, category of people uh, so with that said it seems like aditya l1 is a step in the right direction very soon september 2023 is when the launch is going to take place already the realized structure and the spacecraft are at uh, the shri uh, harikota space center Center. that is something that we'll have to look forward to um, i'm just i'm just asking and this question is to all the three panelists you know not everybody who's watching the show right now is a space aficionado or knows what l1 is or the payloads the packages the instruments these kind of terminologies might end up becoming a little more difficult for all of them so just for their interest and on a lighter note as well all these marvel films and science fiction um, prajwal ma'am and group captain jha also they that do uh, you know intervene in on this you know there's a lot of space travel in terms of space warping you know they want to go to some place they just pick up their spacecraft they press a button and then they're there uh, just want to like you know pick your brains a little bit how soon how soon before we get to that particular point i mean how many thousands of years do you think do you reckon what's your estimate group captain jha let's begin with you actually uh, we sh should never uh, uh, underestimate the power of the brain in science uh, mm -hmm. there was a time when we thought that possibly the type of velocities that we are achieving today would be possibly impossible but today right now we are thinking that we are too slow even today uh, if we are taking so much of uh, a light years if the, if the if the uh, the sun if the light takes so many of the uh, millions of the light years to travel from place a to place b what where uh, do we stand 
but you know everyone have got their own area of interest and in the interest area is the uh, an, in the knowledge domain that one develops when you ask this particular to devdat and uh, madam also that uh, what is your best uh, uh, take on to which instrument or something you know all of us we have got a little bit of biases i have been looking at the the experiment of the plasma you know sun has been glowing for you know billions of years and uh, the type of mass even if it is photon or something else keeps depleting in case if that is depleting uh, the way that it is uh, shining for those billions of year sun should have possibly uh, assumed by now a, a size which is about uh, uh, about uh, one a millionth of it but that is not happening so there are lot uh, many things there which we don't know All so right. plasma is the is going to tell us hmm. what is hmm. the rate of depletion of all this happening and how different it is uh, uh, it is from the normal uh, atomic fusion that we are thinking of today on earth something similar to the sun or china is trying to create that artificial sun that we are talking of and so how different it is from that way there could be a last there could be a vast bit of differences between the two but those are the interesting areas where we should come to know about the newer things come here All right. Uh, any one of our panelists um, who would like to join in on this? Anybody? Either Prajwal yeah. or Devdutt? Yeah, I will add it here. Okay. Yeah, I will add it here. I will add it here. If I, I, if I am not wrong, I understood your question like this. You want like when the humans will have this uh, fastest uh, transportation to reach uh, other planets, like how you are seeing in uh, sci-fi movies. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because I, like I was I was speaking to some youngsters, and they were saying, "Why does it get boring towards the end of it? Why can't we soon have you know speed, uh, you know uh, space warping <laughs> machines, and you know get from one point to another?" Hence the question. Uh, as you know, like speed thrills and also it kills. So we have to yep. be very uh, yep, controlled. Yeah, absolutely. Speed so that uh, yeah, so that we can reach our destination without any accident in any much hurdles. But okay. with the advent of uh, new propulsion technologies, like uh, uh, Captain Jha said, uh, plasma. So yeah. we are currently using the chemical propulsion system to reach, like recently concluded Luna Three. Also, uh, Chandrayaan Three mission also used very extensively and exhaustively chemical propulsion. It's having its own limitation. Then the next is electrical propulsion, where you are using Hall effect thrusters and uh, such kind of things. That is a little more uh, efficient than chemical propulsion. Then the next is uh, nuclear propulsion, which is again uh, there are some uh, limitations, but yes, of course, it has been used in the past. and uh, space agencies like isro also started thinking in that direction i'm sure Then i'm sure this plasma propulsion yeah, so technology plasma will also propulsion very, technology uh, will also continue to grow propulsion technology will also continue to grow we're at a positive of time here uh, you know like prajwal shastri said and this is something that i'm going to uh, say back to all the youngsters that were speaking to me as well uh, that you know let's not stretch it um, it's really far away uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves and jump the spacecraft not the gun if i could put it that way well on that note prajwal shastri many thanks for joining with us uh, devdutt always a pleasure speaking to you and group captain ja you're a star here uh, with your information so many thanks for joining with us uh, needless to say with aditya l1 the first step is certainly in the right direction very soon next month 2023 we're going to look at aditya l1 uh, embark on that cosmic journey on board the pslv rocket our very own isro's workhorse uh, again a very uh, huge thanks to all the panelists with us uh, keep watching news 9 for all the latest on aditya l1 and chandrayaan and whatever's coming out of isro and of course take a look at this even as we let you go uh, listen into what s somnath had to say in terms of the upcoming missions it's not just aditya l1 there are several more in the line this is coming like we're signing off keep watching news 9 live aditya is a mission to sun it is getting ready and uh, it is just ready for launch first week of september it will be launched and after that it will be launched uh, it will travel for many days to reach the l1 point Gaganyaan is still in in the work in progress, and we are doing a mission possibly by end of September or beginning of October for demonstrating the crew module and crew escape capability, and which will be followed by further missions of unmanned missions next year beginning, and many more test test missions and test uh, ground test hundreds of them until we do the first manned mission possibly by 25.
ब्रह्मोस स्टेल्डी लीथल प्रिसाइज इट फ्लाइज एट थ्री टाइम्स द स्पीड ऑफ साउंड एंड कट्स थ्रू अ वॉशिप लाइक अ हॉट नाइफ थ्रू बटर चाइना's navy has threatened its neighbors and they are turning to the brahmos for protection the warship killer this and more streaming on world's first news ott news 9 plus download now china won't let us rest easy on our borders but they will keep flooding our markets what does xi jinping really want i think he wants the indian market no doubt about it it's really a matter of showing their dominance india's great chinese conundrum nobody can contain it not the united states not china not anybody else frenemies streaming